What's up, everybody? Welcome back to day four of guitar. Last time we talked about how to string and clean your guitar. Super important, especially when you're playing more intensely, because if you yank too hard, if you play too much, if you're too cool, you might break a string. And it's important to know how to fix the guitar, how to get it back into working order. And, um, you know, with electric guitars, it's a little different than in my video. And I'd be happy to make a future video for changing strings on an electric but I think most of you will be learning on an acoustic, so that video will suit you just fine. All right, let's do this. So this is advanced guitar, we're stepping it up. But before we do, let's double check our tuning. So get your phone, get guitar tuna, or get your tuner, and make sure that you're in tune, okay? Make sure it's E-A-D-G-B-E. -E. You should know that by now, right? E-A-D-G-B-E. -E. And to warm up both your right hand and your left hand, Today we're going to focus with a pick, so we're going to play using this guy and we're going to try to remember going down and up with our plucks, okay? So down and up. So get your right hand in a position here above the string you're playing on and get your pick ready to go on top of it. And we're going to use this chromatic scale as our warm up, okay? So nice and easy. Uh, actually, I prefer to do this with a metronome. Since you're advanced, you should also have that. And you should practice with the metronome as early as you can in your career because it will set a rhythm in your brain that is exactly what you want it to be. It's a good oscillation for when you play with other people. All right, so pull up that metronome beats app after you're done tuning and set it to 60. And if you need to follow along with me, that's fine, okay? So we're doing this at 60 BPM, and we're just gonna climb up all six of our strings. So E to shining E, A to shining A, D to D, G to G, B to B, and E to E. Here we go. Starting with E. Go back. If you catch yourself kind of making mistakes or going slowly or getting worried, relax. It's super important to just relax. Let's go to the A string. Two, three, four. Remember to relax. Let's go back. Now something that might be happening to you is when you're sliding down into your next position, you might slide from the 12th, right, this 12th fret position. When you slide with the index so that your pinky goes to the next position, you might be on different strings with your fingers, right? That just takes time, so be relaxed, take your time, okay? And be, be confident that you're going to get all of your fingers on the correct string. It's, there's no answer for you, you just have to do it, right? Okay, onto the D string. Two, three, four. Going back. Cool. Now G. Going back. I think this string is going to break. Cool, last one. Oh, sorry, last two. Got the B. Two, three, four. Going back. Going 
going to the E string for Nice, and that's it, okay? So practice that for five minutes on your own at whatever pace you need, and try to make it smooth, and try to keep your fingers on the same string. I know it's a challenge sometimes, and we all make mistakes. Just keep going forward. Don't start over. Just keep going. Whether you're going up or back, just keep on going, all right? Don't stop. Okay. Okay, we're done with the chromatic scale, and now we're gonna move into chord review. So, we're gonna play the following chords. C, a, G, E, and D, all major, all right? So remember, I'm going to say each chord starting with the E string on top, then the A, then the D, then the G, then the B, and then the E string in the bottom. So when I describe the notes, when I describe what you're holding, I'm going to use numbers, and they correspond to the frets, okay? So these dividers, those are the frets, remember. So if I say for the C chord, zero three two zero one zero that's code for the c major shape okay so with your pen or your pencil or whatever you're using chalk highlighter write down c major and then above that write zero and above the zero write three two zero one zero Okay, so it's all ascending. You have C, 0, 3, 2, 0, 1, 0. So it's all ascending on your piece of paper. And there is a reason for that. When you see tablature, when you're looking up songs on the internet, you're going to find that they're written that way. Okay, and if you're wondering why, well, because they correspond to the, to the strings, right? So the bottom one is E, then where we wrote 3, that's an A string. Then the two, that's your D string. Zero, that's your G. The one is on your B string, and the zero is on your second E string. Okay? So the first chord is C. Let's just play it. The second chord is A. And so from here on, I'm going to give you quick numbers just for your reference. You can pause it and write down those numbers if you need to, okay? Next chord is A. Zero, zero, two, 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 zero. Then G, which is three two zero 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 three. Okay, then we have E major, which is zero two two one zero zero. And finally we have D major, which is zero 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 two three two. Okay, so that's the order we're gonna be practicing in. C A G E and D. So familiarize yourself with these positions in your left hand and get ready because we're going to have to play these chords in two different ways. First, we're going to play them with a simple strum using our pick, okay? So that's C, then A, then G, then E and then D. Now I highly recommend practicing these chords with different fingers. So what I mean by that is instead of playing E with these fingers without your pinky, maybe try playing E with these fingers without your index. And that will dramatically increase your dexterity and make your pinky much more involved and more powerful. And you're gonna need it in the long run. So again, practice just down strums. From here your A, your G, your E, and your D. These are all major chords, okay? Now we're gonna practice with arpeggio. So throw away your pick for the second, and we're gonna use the thumb, the index, the middle, and the ring. So these four phalanges we're gonna use, okay? So starting with the C, we're just gonna put the fingers down, these three, corresponding to the ones that are being held. So my thumb will hold the A string, my index will hold the D string, and my middle finger will hold the B string, okay? So I'm just plucking them. 
But you can also substitute fingers in the right hand, that's fine. Now I want you to get more in position. So that means push your thumb more to your left. Okay, so the thumb goes a little bit more to the left, which gives it more of this kind of downward angle shape with your hand. If you're here, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's actually totally fine to do this, but you're gonna find that your hand is not in the ideal position to go back to the string here. If it's here though, it's right over the strings. So you can go right back to them. And the faster you get used to this shape, the better. This one will probably hurt you in the end. This one's really good. All right, so I just want you to pluck each one going up and back, so. If you can, right? And that's it, okay? So that's C, and then you go to A. And for this one, thumb goes on the, for this one you can actually use all four. So you put your thumb on the A string, your index on the D string, your middle on the G string, and your ring finger on the B string, okay? So, sorry. There we go. Nice, that's what we want. Nice and smooth. Next one we want is G, okay? So I'll put the thumb on the E string, the index on the A string, and then either the middle or the ring finger on the high E string, okay? Nice. Then we want the E, the e chord. So thumb on the E string, index on the A string, middle on the D string, ring on the G string, and that's it. And gradually try to turn your hand more this way, right? So. And it might be a little awkward at first, but it will pay off. If you find yourself like this, you're not gonna get a good sound out of the strings, but here, you're gonna sound really good, right? All right. Next one is the D string, the last one, okay? So easy, we're gonna use our thumb on the D string, index on the G, middle on the B, and ring finger on the E string, okay? So. And it's normal to screw up while you're not looking, but try to get out of looking. So try to feel where the strings are. The more you can trust your right hand fingers, the better. All right, so that's it. Practice those five chords using your strum and your arpeggio, your pluck, up and back. Okay, good luck. And remember, this position, not this one. Okay, guitarists, let's finish this. We're halfway there. Almost, almost halfway. And we're gonna do the natural note scale. So grab your pick, and we're gonna just walk through all of them quickly okay i don't expect you to memorize the notes i'm gonna say them out loud just as a reference for myself and i might get stuck finding what the notes are but you can hopefully see the logic of how i'm determining the notes now what might be helpful for you is to pull up an image like a jpeg or a pdf or, or even just on your um you can draw it if you want of a piano keyboard okay so look up piano keyboard and I really just want you to be able to see the notes on the keyboard because you're gonna see C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? It's that keyboard. So draw your own keyboard, and that will really help you remind yourself where the sharps and flats are. Now, you can easily just say there's no sharp above E and there's no sharp above B. And as long as you know that, then you don't have to know anything else. So that's probably the fastest, most efficient way. Just say, E and B have no sharp, okay? So let's get started. Grab your pick, lick your fingers if you don't have enough uh, grip on your pick, it works every time, or you can put the tip of the pick in your mouth and then just rub it back and forth with your index and your thumb to get nice hydrogen bonding. 
So here we go, we're gonna play the E natural note scale, meaning E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E again. Here we go, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And there we go, we're done, that's E. All right, so I'll give you the numbers for where I put my fingers. Zero, one, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, okay? Next, we're gonna do the F natural note scale. So we're going F to shining F, no sharps, no flats, okay? So F, G, E, sorry, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and there you go, that's it, that's F to shining F. Okay, so again, one, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, one. That's F to shining F, F natural note scale. Next, we're gonna go do the G natural note scale. So we're gonna go up here and start here. What you're noticing, hopefully, is that nothing changes. Only that, that first note and the last note change, but everything else, I said nothing changes, but these two change, but everything in between stays exactly the same for now, all right? So here we go, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Easy peasy, let's do it again. So three, zero, two, three, Zero, two, three, zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, one, three. That's the G natural note scale. Very straightforward, very easy, okay? So the next ones are going to be a little bit different, right? So you just played three of them down here. But for the next one, we have to slide up to a new position. So we're going to use this position on the fifth fret, okay? But until that moment, I want you to actually take these three that you just did, so E, F, and G, and practice them over and over again using your pick, and try eventually to start doing both down and up strums, so plucks, so. All right. Okay, so down and up. Okay, practice that, see you in five minutes. Just using your E, F, and G natural note scales. All right, advanced guitar, we're continuing on. We just did E, F, and G on the natural note scale. Now we're gonna do A, B, C, and D. So let's jump right in. We're starting on A, so our index finger has now moved up to the fifth fret position on the E string, okay? So we're playing here, A, then our ring finger plays B, and C comes next with the pinky. Next, we need, so we have A, B, C. Now we need D. Now. The tricky thing for you to know is that this note right here is D, okay? So, so we're really just moving our index down now. So we're not playing any open strings. That's what's changed. So starting on this A for the natural note scale, we're not playing any open notes. Okay, so here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F. G, A. So that was a full scale. Now we're going to keep going across all six strings. We need B now. So we're going to stretch with our pinky. This is what I call the super pinky or the super stretch. So we're not going to go here. We're going to keep it consistent on the fifth fret. And for this particular B note, we're going to stretch with our pinky. So again, from the top, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, Super pinky to B, and now we need C, which is right here, G string, fifth fret. D, E, F, G, 
A. And that's the end, okay? If you need to write this down, go for it, but it's good to build your intuition, okay? So we're going A. I'm going to do uh, positions now, so five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, five, seven, nine, super pinky, okay, five, seven, five, six, eight, and five. It's a little tricky, but you're an advanced guitarist now, so you're trying to pick up the pace. This is the A natural note scale. Next is B. So for the B, we can use our ring finger here and use the exact same methods as we just did with this one, but we're gonna start with our ring finger, which means that we're also gonna finish with our ring finger, but everything in between is gonna be the same, okay? So here we go. We're gonna go B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Oh, I'm sorry. Super pinky to B. Then C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So let me do that again without that hiccup. So we got B, and I find that it's so much better for me, so much easier for me, when I'm actually counting the notes out, because I can see when, oh, that's where that is, and oh, that's a sharp, and oh, okay, I need to avoid the sharp. Okay, so here, starting again with a ring finger on B. So B, C, D. E, F, G, A, super pinky to B, then C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Here we go, super easy, B, the B natural note scale. Now we have C, almost done. So C, we're gonna start with our pinky and everything stays the same. We're gonna start and finish with our pinky. Simple, C, D, E, F, G, A, Super pinky, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Last one is D, so the very last position has a completely unique shape. We're gonna slide with our index up to the, to the 10th fret. And this is D, okay? Now you may not always start with your index finger, we might change this, but let's just try it here. So D, E, F, G, A, B, super pinky, right? Because here's A, we need a super pinky to hit that B. C, D, E. Oh, that's not gonna work, right? We need two super pinkies, it's crazy. So D, E, F, G, A, B, super pinky, right? C, D, super pinky, E, F, G, A. Now you can use either one. You can do a super pinky again, or you can go to the next string. I would go to the next string on B. So that's B, C, D, and that's it. It's kind of a complicated one, but I really like it. So again, D, E, F, G, A, super pinky, B, C, D, super pinky, E, F, G, super pinky, or switch to the next one. I'm gonna go to the next one. So A, B, C, D. Very cool, right? And that's it. That's all of those seven different natural alphabet letters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You just did all of them. You played every single one, all of the natural notes, all of the scales against all six of the strings. That's really an achievement, like big boost, right? Level up, that's big. If you can do all of them like that, that's awesome, okay? And that gets us ready for really starting to play some solos and sound really cool on the guitar. So that's kind of the first part of the key turning is, is learning your natural note scales. So E, F, G, A, B, C, and D, all right? Practice those on your own. Okay, so last time I talked about getting good on guitar, right? That's why you're an advanced guitarist now, not in beginning forever. So now that you just learned all the natural note scales, you just played E, F, sorry, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now we wanna add technique. So that means muting. And that's where you cover 
use the palm of your right hand to cover the strings while you pluck. So, as opposed to. It's my favorite technique, it's super fun to do. It makes chords sound amazing. Practice that one. Next one we got is the hammer on. So that's where you pluck a note and you hammer on really hard with your finger to produce that second tone. Now the reverse of that is the pull off. So that's where you pluck the note and let go. But you have to let go very abruptly and you have to pluck super hard beforehand. Otherwise you won't really hear the second note. Okay, then we have a slide. And that's where you hold the note, hold the string, and slide with pressure up to the target note. And you can use this pretty much anywhere. Just with enough of a pluck, you can really pull it. Okay, and the very last one is bend. So when you hold, maybe with your ring finger, on the G string, let's say, you're just gonna pull using the tip of that finger against, you're gonna pull the string down against the wood. And you wanna get a really noticeable sound out of it. So to be good, we need to be able to play with techniques. We need to do what's called phrasing and play with dynamics, but we'll talk about that later when we get into soloing. For now, we're gonna talk about these techniques and we're gonna just practice them. So pick anyone you want. Let's say I picked, um, I, I don't know, E, okay? So I, I started with E and now I wanna do it muted. So I'm gonna play the natural note scale muted. And you can just do this over and over and over and over and over again. And that's muted. Now I want to do the exact same thing on maybe a different uh, natural note scale. But I'm going to... Sorry, I said the same thing. I'm going to do a natural note scale on a different alphabet letter. And I'm going to choose a different technique. So let's say I do more bends. So I'll pick, I don't know, D again. So let's go all the way back to D. And I'm going to practice bending more notes. So that means every single opportunity I have, I'm going to bend the crap out of a note. So D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then D again. Now obviously it's hard to bend down when you have the E string because it goes off. So you want to actually bend the E string up. It's the only exception, right? And you're going to see a lot of guitarists on their solo go like that with their whole hand coming up. And that's because they're making sure that that E string actually goes up. They don't ever want it to go, that sounds terrible, right? So they play it safe. and they're just pulling that string up with their index finger. Okay, so then you're gonna practice that. You're gonna practice that bend. So you've got muting, you've got bending, we've got hammer-ons, pull-offs, we've got all that stuff. Now it's your turn to pick them at your discretion. Just pick them and make sure you're practicing every single technique. Kind of just beat it over the head until you're sick of it. Okay, so a lot of hammer-ons is gonna be kind of annoying, right? Okay, but you should do it. And then pulling off obviously will come backwards. Okay, so give yourself the time, practice these, do a lot of slides. And so on and so forth, okay? So have fun with it. This is gonna take a lot of your time and that's okay. Take the time, It's this is your time now. It's your time to practice a guitar. So really work on every single technique and figure out which one you like the most. For me, it's muting and obviously it's gonna bias things, but I really just enjoy that sound. I think it's fun to play scales that way. And uh, let me know what you like playing because I, I like to get that feedback. Okie dokie, let's finish out today's class. So the end of day four is gonna cover what I call the movable E or the modular E shape. So when we play E major, 
We normally play it with our index finger, right? Most people learn it first with their pinky exposed, right? So that's your E major chord. But I want to teach you how to move this shape more because it, guess what? If you move this shape around, let's say here, two of those strings aren't changing, the top and the bottom ones, but everything else is getting changed with these fingers holding them down. So to keep it consistent, we have to use the movable E shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our fingers down like we normally would with the E, but we're going to change so that the index finger is no longer being used. So the middle finger will replace the index finger, the ring finger will replace the middle finger, and the pinky will replace the, the ring finger, okay? So I'm just going to make that adjustment slowly. So index off, middle finger replaces, ring finger off, replaces, pinky on, replaces, okay? It's the same exact chord, the same exact strings, the same exact notes, but now we're playing it without our index, okay? And the benefit of this is we can now move this around. So if I play E major and I move up by one fret and I put my finger down really, really firmly and really strong against all six strings, I can produce the F chord. Now, in the beginning, guitarists struggle with this because it takes a lot of hand strength and a lot of muscle in the index finger and in the thumb. And that's okay, give yourself time. But it's better to practice good habits early. So if you look at the finger, it should not be like this for a bar. That makes no sense. Sounds nice, but makes no sense. We want to hold and squeeze using the base of the finger. So we really want to focus on the base. A lot of students have told me that when they focused on the base like that, it worked much better. If you focus on the tip, your, your finger naturally curves. But if you focus on the base and straightening it there, it naturally gets a lot stronger. And give yourself a, the, the right space for your exact finger, okay? And on the back side, you want your thumb to be firm against the middle of the neck. If your thumb is too high, you're never gonna get a, you're never gonna get a bar. It's not gonna happen, okay? So you have to get that thumb down so that your wrist comes forward and your index has the opportunity to slam down against all six, okay? So that's the right form. And that's the movable E. So when we're here, it's E. And when we move it up by one, it's F. If we move it up to the third, it's G. If we move it up here to the five, it's A. To seven, it's B. To eight, it's C. To 10, it's D. And to 12, it's E again. Don't believe me? It's the same exact chord. Okay, just like this one is G. Okay, so that's the movable E, and I want you to get comfortable with it. So move around with it, keep that thumb nice and low on the back side of the neck, and use that index and squeeze down. Get that ideal spot where you can hit all six strings with the index finger. It's going to take a lot of time, but I really encourage you to get your hand in front. That's going to help the most. Okay, so Practice getting that thumb in front, uh, sorry, practice keeping that thumb down low and getting that index and wrist out front and producing a nice, clean, movable E shape. If you want to, to challenge yourself, you can try playing the C-A-G-E-D system, so the caged system. Try playing all five of those chords using this shape. So that means if I wanted to play C, I would have to find it, right? And I just told you it was up here but you could work your way up. So if this was E, the next one would be F, then F sharp, then G, then G sharp, then A, A sharp, B, and here's C. So the index finger kind of tells you the identity of the chord. So here's C. If I wanted A, I could step down, right? So, okay, that's, uh, if this was C, this is B, and then B flat or A sharp, and then here's A, okay. So I have to go from eight, where C is, to five, where A is. Next I need G, which is down two more frets. Then I need E, which is all the way at the bottom. And then I want D, which is way up top. Right, because if this was C on eight, then this would be C sharp and this would be D. So that's it, again, C on eight, A on five, G on three, E on zero, D on 10. Practice this on your own using that movable shape. We're going to use this a lot for the rest of your online guitar 
playing. Because this movable shape is kind of the other part of unlocking that door to playing guitar wicked fast, wicked well, and really starting to hone in on the skills that you need. Okay, so that's it for this class. I can't wait for next one. Next one's gonna be day five. Practice a lot, and if your fingers hurt, get someone to massage them or massage them yourself. And don't be discouraged. This is advanced guitar. It's time to take it seriously. It's time to get good. Good luck.